Good morning. My name is Jean Block, and as a member of the conference program committee, I want to thank you for attending the inaugural Women Can Conference and this session about the benefits that mentors and sponsors can provide to your career. Six months ago, the program committee started discussing potential program topics, and someone suggested the topic of the importance of sponsors and mentors and sp sponsorships. That was the first time I'd ever heard of the need for and benefits of a sponsor. Around that same time, I read Sheryl Sandberg's book, Lean In, and began to fully understand the difference that having a sponsor can make in one's career. Studies have found that people who are mentored and sponsored have more career success, such as higher compensation, a greater number of promotions, and greater career and job satisfaction. We all know what mentors do. They provide advice, support, and feedback to their mentee. But what about sponsors? Sponsors traditionally hold senior positions and use their influence and power to advocate on behalf of an individual, such as pushing to get that person a promotion or mo more noteworthy assignments. I'm so pleased to facilitate this session because I've known Colette Honorable for the 12 years that I've been in Arkansas, and I've admired her professional achievements for nearly all of that time. But more than that, I've always greatly appreciated her because when I moved to Arkansas and didn't know a soul, someone told me that Colette Honorable would be a good person to talk with to get a sense of the Little Rock legal community and job market. Colette was kind enough to take my call and visit with me, and her feedback helped me get my footing here. Colette has been a member of the Arkansas Public Service Commission since Governor Beebe appointed her in 2007. She became interim chairman of the commission in 2008, and she has served as chairman of the commission since 2011. Prior to these appointments, Colette served as chief of staff for then Attorney General Mike Beebe. She worked in the AG's office for over five years, serving as, as an assistant attorney general in the consumer and civil litigation divisions, and as a senior assistant attorney general in the Medicaid fraud division. Her previous work experience also includes serving as executive director of the Arkansas Workforce Investment Board and as a judicial law clerk at the Arkansas Court of Appeals. During her time at the Public Service Commission, Colette has gained national acclaim for her expertise in the field of public utilities. She is currently serving as president of the National Association of Regulatory Utility Commissioners, known as NARUC. This is noteworthy because she is the first woman from Arkansas, she's the first person from Arkansas to hold this position and the first person of color to hold this position. She was appointed by the Department of Transportation Secretary to the Technical Pipeline Safety Standards Committee, and she's also served on the Nehruk White House Smart Grid Working Group. These are just a few of Colette's national utility-related appointments. Suffice it to say, she is a force and a significant presence on the national utility regulatory scene. Colette has been equally influential here in Arkansas. Her honors include receiving the 2013 Just Communities of Arkansas Humanity excuse me, Humanitarian Award, and the 2012 Outstanding Public Service Award from the UALR Bowen School of Law. And she also was named one of AY's Powerful Women in 2010. It is my pleasure to welcome Colette Honorable to the podium. Good morning. I just spoke on Friday in D.C. at the National Association of Women Judges meeting. I can't even tell you how excited I am to stand here in front of a sea of incredible women. It doesn't happen often enough, does it? It doesn't happen. So when it does, I have to just pause and just take it in. Was this morning incredible or what? It was awesome. I want to thank Jean Black for that lovely introduction and also uh, Susie Marks and all of the people who are working to put on this incredible event. And I hope that, and I give you permission to, for one hour, focus on you. Not work, not home, the kids have their lunches, you lock the door. Did I turn the car off? You know, you think about all those things. For one hour, I'm empowering you women, focus on you. Can you do that? Okay, very good. So, Jean, thank you for the invitation to participate. Working on issues of empowering women and particularly educating girls is something that I am passionate about. I wish I could do it 
And I'm ecstatic about the women in this room, women I've gone to high school with, like Kim Byers, women I've worked with all the time, like Emily Cox Jordan, and women who have been mentors for me in the community. Our facilitator is Miss Maddie Willis. Wave your hand, Miss Maddie, back there. I'm going to embarrass her right now. I've known her from church, so she will tell the truth about it all. <laughs> and uh, she's our facilitator today. Something so special about Miss Maddie, she volunteers as, uh, as when you go to vote early, you'll see her. Um, over at the administration building. She, as of March 1 of this year, she is a 40-year cancer survivor. Is that incredible? <laughs> so it's important, and we'll talk more about this in this hour. And this is going to be an interactive session. I want you to feel engaged. I want you to feel fed in this hour. It's important that we as women take time to do that. We are nurturers. We take care of everyone else. And what's left at the end of the day, we save for ourselves. So this hour is for you. The first question I have for you, is there anyone in this room who's maxed out your potential? You've gone as far as you can go. You've plateaued. There's nothing else you can do in your career. Good then this session is for every one of you. So something in this hour, sometimes we think we've learned it all, but we really haven't. And this session about mentors and sponsors has nothing to do with age, does it? It has nothing to do with how many years you've spent in your career. It has nothing to do with your level of education. It has nothing to do with your title. So I hope that something that's said in this hour will change your career trajectory as we heard um, Ann Doyle mention, there are so many of us who are educated. And if you think about a layer cake, there are so many of us that have gotten through that, or we're sometimes still in that bottom layer, but we're really right in the middle. We're in that middle layer of icing. How do we break through to that top layer? Listen, I don't want to break through to the top layer. I want to be the icing on the cake. I want to be the candle on top. And so whatever that thing is for you, whatever that icing is for you, whatever that candle is for you, I want us to talk um, during this hour about how we get there. So today we're going to explore two concepts in professional development. And I'm staying here behind the podium because they are recording. This isn't my style. I like to move around, so bear with me. But this um, hour we are going to talk about mentors and sponsors. So my first question, how many of you have heard of the book Lean In by Sheryl Sandberg? Good. And how many of you have read the book? Very good. So a few of us. So you guys will be tapped on just because you raised your hands. You're going to be the star pupils. In this book, Sheryl Sandberg evaluates why is it that women who are equally qualified for the jobs that we hold and the jobs we want to hold why is it that we don't get those jobs? And why is it that we don't excel as quickly as men in the workplace? And she encourages us to lean in to professional opportunities. She also explores the behaviors that we undertake over and over. You, hand, you heard Ann Boyle reference them, right? We eliminate ourselves. We do that. Why do we do it? I speak to women quite a bit, and one... Um, speech I give is about the scripts that we run. Why do we go to a business strategic session and we don't say a word? We don't think we're smart enough. We don't think we're skinny enough. We don't think we're cute enough. Who cares about who's cute and who's not, by the way, and who's skinny and who's not? What is it in us that makes us hold ourselves back? And I talk about these scripts that we run I don't want to say anything because it might be a dumb response. Well, guess what? Joe says it, and it's dead on. Joe says it, and he'll be leading the effort. You know, you thought it to yourself, and you didn't speak up. And also, she talks about these behaviors that we exhibit as women that relegate us in the professional atmosphere. Why is it that you have to be the host at every meeting? Why are you getting other people's coffee for them? Let them get their own coffee. I'll get my own. Why do we as women take on those roles? I think in the South, too, it's really interesting. Now, let me say this. I have mentors um, that, are, that I'm very close to, 
if I'm getting a cup of coffee, I'll get one for them. I don't want you, I don't want to suggest to you, you shouldn't be courteous in the workplace. I'm suggesting to you that your role and your purpose in that room is not to serve others. Your role and your purpose in that room is the same as their role and purpose. Are they serving you and getting your coffee? They are focused on the mission at hand and how they are going to be a valuable part of a process and be valued in the outcome. I want to give you an example of this. I was at a, a women's conference. It was a women's energy conference in Florida recently, uh, just last fall. This room was full of women energy executives. So, and by saying that, I'm also saying to you, these women were very well off. I was probably the lowest paid person in that whole room. <clears throat> I'm saying that also to you to say these women had worked for decades to move up in the ranks in their careers to become senior executives at um, very uh, influential and powerful companies in the U.S. We began by introducing ourselves, and our meeting planner said, we're going to go around the room. Everyone, introduce yourself and tell us why you're all that. That stunned this room. If you'd asked us to talk about transmission planning, and the outlook for natural gas in the U.S. and abroad, we could talk all day long. Getting us to say why we individually think we're all that stunned this group. And then the next thing was stunning to me. So we began kind of like this room. This side began. We had a couple of women who went for it. My name is Colette, and I'll tell you why I'm all that. I'm senior vice president of X, Y, and Z company. And I manage a portfolio of $10 billion and so on. We're like, okay. But there's a sea of these people. There was a chink in the chain because uh, then one woman said, I don't think I'm all that. Then another woman who said, well, I'm really not all that. And from there, it just went downhill. What on earth? Who are these women? So by the time it got to this side of the room, and I'm kind of in the back, I, this is before the lean-in book, and I had had enough, and I stood up and said, what is wrong with us? Why do we not think we're all that? We are. If you weren't, you wouldn't be in this room. And I say that to you today. I played that song, Girl on Fire, not for me. It's for you. You are women on fire, and you are holding such potential right now if you're only brave enough to pursue it. So we're going to talk about that and how you can do it with mentors and sponsors. My second question for you, have you all heard of a book by Sylvia Ann Hewitt? It's called Forget Your Mentor, Find a Sponsor. Has anyone heard of that one? Okay. <clears throat> I'll tell you the title again. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sylvia Ann Hewlett, Forget a Mentor, Find a Sponsor. Hewlett is the CEO of the Center for Talent Innovation, and she also wrote this book after a study that the center undertook. So last year, the center released a report detailing a two-year study that was conducted on 12,000 men and women in the workplace, so white-collar men and women in the U.S. and in Britain, and the results were stunning. And I think that Jean referenced some of those, so thank you for that. That'll help me get to the point here. The results of the study indicated that it's not enough to have mentors. How many of you have a mentor? Informal or formal? Okay, we'll talk more about that. The results of this study indicated that, in fact, the women that break through that middle icing layer that we talked about have more than a mentor. They have a sponsor. They have someone who is advocating for them, who is doing for them, who is making a pathway for them, who is knocking down forest trees for them to move on in their career path. This is interesting because in Hewlett's book, she talks about the value of both. So I want to emphasize here, it's important for you to take away from this session, having a mentor is great, and having a sponsor is even better. So I want to share with you just a couple of personal experiences from my perspective. 
when I thought about who my mentors were and who my sponsors were, my mentors were both formal and informal growing up. My mentors taught me things like how to plan a business agenda, about parliamentary procedure, about introductions in a business setting, about how to conduct myself in various situations, whether I'm at a business dinner for work, is it a sorority business dinner, is it a church event, and I call it pivoting. I'm the same person in each one of those situations, but I've had mentors, both formal, who said, I'm going to take you under my wing, and it's been the best thing for me, and people who have informally given me guidance and advice, and we all need someone pulling our coattail from time to time saying, next time let me recommend what you should do. Not always someone who's a cheerleader. That's not really how we grow all the time. It's also someone who gives us something to think about and quite honestly, someone who corrects us if we go awry. So my mentors have taught me simple things, how to pack for a business trip. How many of you have gone on a business trip? You left the suit for the second day. Just happened to me. It's my excuse to go to Macy's the next day. <laughs> the importance of sending personal notes. Now, something you're thinking to yourself, I, my mother taught me that. For some of you, your mother did. And for some of you, you weren't in an environment or maybe your mother just wasn't the note writing type. But the mentor encourages you and listens to you and you pick up things from them along the way. When I thought about my sponsor, on the other hand, we're all uh, fantastic in our own right. So let me say that first of all. There is something incredible and awesome and wonderful about every woman sitting in this room. And I believe that. I really do. But what is it that sets you apart? And what is it that helps you break through that layer is it just the fact that you've got two or three degrees? Probably not. I would definitely tell you part of it is who you know. Part of it is what you bring the table to the table. And part of it is what someone is willing to do for you, right? It's not just enough that you know people. So the fact that it's who you know that gets you somewhere, I would stop that person dead in their tracks. It's the person that's willing to do something on your behalf that they feel so invested in you without you even asking that they are willing to go the extra mile for you. So when I think about men or sponsors in my life, um, and those of you who know me would also probably agree, um, Governor Mike Beebe has been a sponsor for me. He's tapped me for positions I didn't apply for. He's called me in and said, you can do this, jobs I didn't think I could do. Senator Mark Pryor has been one. He's been my employer before who tapped me and saw things in me. I mention them, too, because I want you to understand, and I think Ann Doyle mentioned this, your sponsor doesn't have to be a woman. In fact, many times your sponsors will be men. Now, I don't know what you've heard about the term sponsor, but I want to clarify, it's a wholly appropriate term. There's nothing inappropriate about the term sponsor. I'm speaking about sponsorship in a professional sense. Sponsors are people who feel strongly about your potential and want to help you succeed in your career or in your personal life. So... With that, I want to ask for two helpers. I think Jean will be one helper. We have one chart here with uh, mentors, and we have one with sponsors. And uh, this is where what you've heard will come into play. We'll see how good you've been listening. Could we have someone on this side help? Thank you. Tell me your name. Lori. Lori. I love your black and red. Okay, let's talk first about what we're going to do right now is think out loud, and we're going to first mention characteristics that we believe are those of mentors, and then characteristics of sponsors. So let's begin with Jean's list. Not everyone at once. Describe, what are words that describe a mentor? A mentor is a confidant. 
patient, encourages, understands. Okay, a coach. That's great. Good example. Amen. Amen. Truth teller. <laughs> we need a few of those in our lives. Truth teller. I'm sorry? Advice, yes. Inspiring. Corrector. That's interesting. I'm going to hold, don't write down corrector. We're going to hold that one. And remind me who offered that one. We're going to kick that one over to the other side. Inspiring. Any others? Listens. Very good. Hmm? Yes. That's great. They share things that didn't work for them so that you can learn from their experiences. Make, make something beautiful of that, Jean. They share things. Very good. This is great. Any others? You guys rock. I told you. You're on fire. Okay. The sponsors list. Powerful. That's excellent. Who said that? Ah, Emily, of course. Trailblazer. Trailbla you guys rock. Trailblazer. What else? Advocate. Influential. Courageous. And where's our other word? Corrector. Okay. Have you guys been in this class before? You are fabulous. <clears throat> Yes, speak on your behalf. You write so well. What an awesome... I'm sorry? Risk taker. That's great. That gives me a chill, actually. <laughs> Risk taker. Helpful. Yes, I agree. Very experienced. Yes. Yes, tough as nails. Fearless. I, I didn't hear. Yes, they can see the forest instead of the trees. They can see the big picture. Credible, very good. Who's going who's gonna to do what they say if they're not credible? They do. They have the inside scoop. That's good. We like to get the inside scoop, don't we? Yes, they are self-confident. Oh, this is awesome. The thing I love, so let's take a look at our list. And let's give our recorders a hand. Thank you. So for our mentors list, we have confident, patient, encourages, coach, educates, shares things, sets a good example, a truth teller, provides advice, inspires, and listens. That's good, isn't it? So let's go from good to great. So sponsors are powerful, trailblazers, they're advocates, they're influential, courageous, they're correctors. So more than just listening, they will give you critical feedback. They speak on your behalf. They're risk takers. They're helpful, experienced, tough. I added one in there. Fearless. They see the big picture. They're credible. They have the inside scoop, and they are self-confident. That's pretty incredible, isn't it? And they're both believers. They are both believers. That's the awesome thing. And that's the thing that makes me so excited. I actually sent emails before coming over here today saying, I'm so excited to go talk about this. I hope you will uh, think more about mentors, both uh, having mentors and being mentors, but also having a sponsor. And a couple of other words maybe I didn't see up here. For mentors, um, they provide support. A shoulder to cry on. A 
and guidance. I think guidance is similar to coach, but some who I, I lead actually an international women's mentoring group of energy uh, regulators from literally all over the world. I have two mentees. One is in Egypt and one is in Turkey. I'm actually going to meet my mentor in Turkey for the first time later this month. I'm going to Istanbul for another meeting. And we're going to meet. And it's interesting, aside from the communication barriers and the time, I'm always having to convert the time from Egypt to Istanbul and so on. Um, the barriers and insecurities are the same. It's unbeliever, unbelievable. It's also staggering to me. And so I'm committed to continuing to harness this strength and this power and the potential that we have as women. Um, but so we've had a webinar, it was an international one, uh, about the, what a mentor is. And we talked quite a bit about the proper role of the mentor. Is it to coach? Is it to listen and guide and let them figure it out from there? I kind of see them very similar, actually. And I think a good mentor, a come in. I think a good mentor also uh, provides good feedback, too. The thing about a sponsor is, though, on this point, the sponsor will is courageous enough and cares about you enough to tell you the truth. They're a truth teller, too. So they will say, um, you probably shouldn't have done that. Um, or they will give you other feedback where a mentor may just be more of a passive listener and uh, encourager. And a sponsor is more aggressive, I would say. Not aggressive in a negative way, aggressive in a positive way. Isn't she a star recorder? She saw one missing. <laughs> I don't know either. Aggressive. aggressive. <laughs> you guys are listening. That's awesome. Okay. So on the sponsor side, so I would say the mentor advises where the sponsor acts. Okay. So if in your mind you're trying to think about who these people are, they're all good and, and tell me your name. Whitney established it. They're both, they both love us, but the difference is the sponsor is going to act on your behalf. So I think we had advocate up there. Connector is one that I would add. Connector. Do we have playmaker? That's one. Someone said risk taker. That's on my list too. Someone who invests in you. That's important. They're sowing seeds into you. They want to affirmatively do something that improves you and your standing. They deliver. And then it's promote up there. Okay, so that's another good one. So here's the final analogy I would offer for both of these. One helps you define your dream by advising you. Your mentor helps you arrive at what you think your dream is. And I also talk on another series about what on earth are you here for. I just wish we had all day to talk. We don't. Sponsors act, and they enable your dreams. Now, neither of them tell you what your dreams ought to be, and that's very important. You know what that is, and it's important. We as women sometimes tend to do what we think other people think success means. What does success mean to you? Success might mean being the best a homemaker and keeper of your home. If you are blessed enough to do that, good for you. Success for you might mean excelling and rising to the top in your company. How are you going to go about getting there? Is it just enough that you have the degrees to do it? So I'm suggesting maybe not. Let me give you an example of this dream concept. I was working at the AG's office, just a lowly lawyer. Okay, I'd gotten a promotion or two. Had been tapped for them. One day I'm just preparing for a trial. I get word that the chief of staff has uh, decided to go out and pursue her dream, which was a consulting uh, career. This was on a Wednesday. She's going to leave on Friday. On Thursday, oh, Wednesday night, like pillow talk, I say to my husband, 
that chief of staff job would be a dream job. That, that would be an incredible opportunity. Do I send in a resume? No, what an idiot I am. Don't do anything. I just say to him, kind of thinking out loud to myself, that would be wonderful. Fast forward the next day, back in my office preparing for trial, there's a knock at the door. It's then Attorney General Mike Beebe, who tells me he has some good news and bad news for me. And he's very serious, which he's not all the time, and it made me nervous. And then I was very serious. I said, all right, well, what's the bad news? And he said, I need to borrow you for a little while. And I said, okay, well, what's the good news? He said, you'll make more money. <laughs> so he began to tell me why he wanted me to do this job. He never said what the job was. By the way, at this time, he's running for governor. And then I go on to tell him why I would be honored to do the job. And then I stop and say, wait a minute, you're talking about the chief of staff job, right? And he says, yes. How did you know? I said, I did know. I was hoping. I was dreaming it would be that. So here was an opportunity. He had no idea that I wanted to do this job. But because something in me, there was that barrier that I told you about earlier, that script that I was running in my mind thinking, I don't know if I can do it, but it would be a dream job. Here this man is, an enabler, who came down and tapped me. And then I keep running the script. So that Monday morning, oh, I find out the next day, I go call up there and I say, when do I start the job? And they said, Monday morning. And I'm like, what? Oh, my God, I've got a trial in two weeks. It was just a crazy life. I go up early Monday morning, still running the script in my mind, and I say, you don't have to do this, General. And he said, what are you talking about? I said, look, this is an important year in your life, and you need the very best person. Can you believe this, Pam? <laughs> and he says, are you kidding me? You have this job because you deserve it. I'm not doing anything for you. You deserve this job. You've worked hard for this job. I said, I agree. He said, okay, then. I said, okay, I'm going to work then. <laughs> So all of you have the potential to find a sponsor. You have a sponsor right now. So even the first time I gave this talk, that was when it dawned on me that I have sponsors. Because before I thought I'd been blessed, which I have been. I thought I've been in the right place at the right time, which I also had been. But also, you have to have someone in your life who's willing to Take that extra step. So there are certain intangible qualities, and I want to give you these very quickly, and then we can have time for Q&A. Certain intangible qualities that you need to possess. You can't go get them. You can't sit beside somebody and get them. They're in you, or they can be developed in you. <clears throat> the first one is going to be hard for you. Okay? Okay. I'm going to tell you that in advance. But you have to believe me. The first one is, it's all about you. It's all about you in a couple of respects. One is, you need to put yourself first for a change. You need to be thoughtful about your dreams, your career goals, your aspirations. What is your success? Okay? That's the first thing. It's all about you. And stop living your life for other people. Live it for you. That's the number one. It's all about you. That's okay. It's okay for you to be selfish about that one thing. Number two, or excuse me, this is still in number one, but the, in the fact that it's all about you, you have to excel you have to be the best at whatever that thing is for you. Because otherwise, maybe you really don't want to be the icing and the candle. That's something you decide. If you, if you do want to go for the gusto, you have to excel at whatever that thing is for you. So for me, at the moment, it's utility regulation. I didn't set out, number one, to come to this job 
Emily's laughing. It was another one of those, the governor calls, I got to talk to you about something. And look, six years, seven years later, here I am. I didn't decide when I started that I wanted to be president of a national association, but there were opportunities that came about and I decided I'm good enough. You heard Ann Doyle talk about that. I didn't eliminate myself. I thought I'm as good as the next person. I don't know if I truly, truly, truly believe that in my heart. You have to if you're going to pursue it because of the work and the dedication involved. So you have to commit yourself to be outstanding, to excel. Number two, this is another very significant intangible with regard to your sponsor. There has to be trust. The sponsorship relationship is reciprocal, right? It's not just about what they're doing for you, is it? It's also what you're doing for them. You think right now about the most powerful sponsors, whether or not they're your sponsors. They have a loyal team, don't they? They have a loyal cadre of people who are dependable, who believe in their vision, and who can do things for them. So the point I'm making here, and it's not a bad point, Sponsors aren't purely altruistic. Their goal in life is not for you to be the greatest thing. Their goal in life could be to run a $500 billion company. And you are part of what helps them do that. And it also, in return, you are getting to do the things that you want to do. So it's reciprocal. At the center of that is trust. When you think about speaking up on someone's behalf, when you think about recommending someone for a position, by God, they better deliver. <laughs> because your name and your reputation are important to you, and it's the same thing with the sponsor. When that sponsor, unbeknownst to you, utters your name as the go-to woman, better than that, the go-to person who happens to be a woman, they need to know that you will deliver. It can't be equivocal. It can't be maybe she can do it. They have to know there's a trust factor. They also have to know that you will move heaven and earth to get it done. That's that reciprocal relationship where the sponsor is putting his or her credibility on the line for you. And there's also a dependability and loyalty component uh, where you too are investing in their dreams as well. It doesn't mean you're abandoning your own, but it does mean that you are investing in a vision at times that's greater than yours. And you have to be fine with that. It's worked wonderfully for me in my career in pu public service, and um, it's really been a joy. The third thing with regard to finding or... Um, attaining a sponsor, is you have to be strategic. Strategic. <clears throat> what, am, what do I mean here? You can't just walk up to someone and, says, and say, I want you to be my sponsor, right? It's, it's created based upon relationships. It's created based upon what your long-term goals and dreams are. That's very important. You have to do some evaluation of where you are currently, where it is you want to go, how do you plan on getting there. And it's important, ladies, that you take the time to plan this for yourself. Um, we do so many things for so many people in their causes and their efforts. So I want to ask you, what are you doing for you? Because ultimately, when you are successful and when you're happy and you're doing the things you love, it's great for your family, too. It's great for your employer or your business, too. And it's great for you. So you have to be strategic. When you're looking for a sponsor, I was just visiting with a, a, a young lady that I know very well. And we were having this conversation about mentors and sponsors. And I asked her, she said she thinks she has a sponsor. And I said, who is it? And she gave me the name, and I said, no, that person's a mentor. 
A sponsor is someone who can make things happen. So it, it actually could be a person that's two tiers or more higher than where you are. My counterparts are not my, are not eligible to be my sponsors. Uh, here's my confidence coming out. I want the creme de la creme. I want the best of the best. I'm not going to settle for a sponsor. I want the best sponsor because this person, when we develop that relationship and there's a position of trust and loyalty, um, the sky's the limit. So I hope that uh, you're thinking even now about who that person might be. Let me say one other final point about your sponsor. Efficacy trumps affinity. Efficacy trumps affinity. Don't pick someone that you like. This is important. Pick someone who is good. Pick someone who is good at doing either the thing that you want to do or someone who is good and able to, without a doubt, help you get to where you want to be. Don't look for someone that you like, someone that's nice, someone that you like to be around. Your sponsor may at times not be that person at all. Um, but maybe someone who's respected, I think someone mentioned that too, someone who's credible and someone who is able to make the plays and make the thing happen. So it's interesting too that we have these discussions. With men, sometimes it just happens. With men, sometimes it happens and it's unspoken. And so we need to collect ourselves. We have our collective attention spans and say that we are we too are deserving of breaking through that middle layer and getting to the top and becoming the icing on the cake or the candle so with that you have a postcard <clears throat> and you don't have to write out a whole name if you don't want you can write initials if you want. I want you to write at the top, mentor, and in the middle, sponsor. And I want you to think, again, we're still thinking about, this is still within the hour. You're still empowered to think about you and to do for you right now. So I want you to think about and jot down the names of a couple of mentors if you don't have a postcard. Miss Willis can give you one. There's one over on, she needs one over here. Who are your mentors? I'm not asking you who you mentor, okay? Do you understand that? Okay. This is about you. Who are your mentors, whether it's formal or informal, and we all have them. Thank goodness. Now, without telling me who you think your sponsor is, do you think you have a sponsor? If so, raise your hand. Great, great. Put those initials down. You could have more than one. I think I have lots. I think I do. I wonder if I ask them if they say the same thing. <laughs> Write their initials or their names if you're comfortable doing that. And I want you to make a point to reach out to both. What is, what is reasonable for you? Is 30 days reasonable? I would say a week. Okay, I'll give you that. Somebody's laughing about the week. Okay, okay. I'll give you 30 days, and I want you to reach out to both and to share with them. But this is going to give you time to think more about you and what you're doing and where you're headed. I want you to be deliberate about your future. What, what is it that you hope to attain 
You're visiting with both, first with your mentor and then with your sponsor. Sometimes you don't get that tap. I think Ann Doyle talked about that. Sometimes you've got to bust that door open. And today is your day to do it. And I'm excited. I hope that, and sometimes when I give these talks, I tell people, please share with me um, your success story. So I hope that, and I have some cards, and I work at the Public Service Commission. It's on Center Street downtown. You can find my email address online. I would love to hear from you. I heard from one woman who said, I quit running the script that said I'm not good enough to start my own business. And she started her business January of last year. That's awesome. She took the plunge because she believed in herself. And I hope that this session was a wonderful one. I think we still have some time for questions and I'd love to, or comments, either one. Now's your time. Thanks so much. Yes. Sports. And tell me your name. Angie, Angie's question is, does it boil down to self-esteem? Why is it? And the way that mothers raise boys and raise girls. They, there's a saying that mothers raise girls and love boys. But with regard to this issue of the traits that are instilled in young boys and young girls, there is definitely something to that. We are taught to be courteous. We are taught to defer. Um, we are taught to make people comfortable. And particularly in the South, we're taught to be charming and beautiful and quiet. And when we are boisterous and all of those sorts of things, there is something wrong. That's right. I, 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 I and we're not respected, mm -hmm. and we're not oftentimes respected, but a lot of women perpetrate that. This is the women's circle. That's true. So within the women's circle, there's not that circle of safety to encourage that womanity mm -hmm. and be a leader. And tell me your name. Rebecca, Rebecca yes. We're responsible for that as a subpopulation. As women, we're, we're you know, directly responsible for that. Oh, she said no. <laughs> well, and Rebecca hits on a good point. We are all equally responsible, and we all should surround ourselves with positive women. There is no reason why I need to spend time with negative people, period. Mm -hmm particularly negative women. Um, I complimented our recorder in her black and red because it's beautiful. It didn't hurt me one bit, did it? To compliment her, it takes nothing away from me. Um, I am lifted up, too. When I see a smile, to see you all smile, um, it lifts me up. And it's incumbent upon us as women to not only surround ourselves with positivity and women who are encouraging and uplifting us, people who do, that sows into our spirit, but also to be that person, to be the positive person, particularly if you're in a role in leadership and management. I, I think that I'm a nice person in my job. My job is not to make friends, 
but I can still be respected and still be pleasant. I'm not, uh, I don't have multiple personalities. I'm all still the same person. And so I'm glad you raised that point. And these are things that mentors help teach us too. When we find good women mentors, we can see how adept they are and how astute they are. My Senator Joyce Elliott is this very person. Courteous, professional, fearless. Mm -hmm. Fearless. And you can be all of those things. There's, there's no duplicity in that. You can be all the same person. Tell me your name. Of course. It's lovely. That's wonderful. That's right. They are not. Thank you for saying that. And it depends upon your journey. It depends upon your journey and where you are in your career. I've had situations where a mentor became a sponsor. A sponsor sponsor now is more of a mentor. Uh, just by virtue of what I'm doing now, what he's doing now. Thank you for that. That was wonderful. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's wonderful. So it's important as you're planning your path, and I'm, I tend to say career path, but it could be a personal path. I want you to think about this broadly. That's a great point. There could be some lateral movement there. I've taken lateral steps in my career where I began as a consumer attorney at the AG's office. I took a lateral move to work in civil litigation. But I thought that in terms of my long-term career goals, it would be better to uh, reposition myself uh, within the organization, it wasn't um, an upward, m- upwardly mobile position at the time. In fact, it wasn't a pay raise, um, was the very same classification of a job. So it's important that you be open enough. First of all, bef- even before being open, you need to be confident enough to seize the opportunity when it's presented to you. And second, you need to be open to the various types of opportunities that could help you get to your long-term goal. I've held a couple of positions that I didn't quite plan on. And one uh, that was executive director of a workforce investment board, it was a cabinet-level position that completely wasn't on my radar. But I learned so much in that role. Um, running a state agency rather than running someone else's office, um, 
working directly with the legislature, overseeing 60 workforce centers in the state of Arkansas, learning more about myself and being challenged in a way that I'd never had. That was the first time where I was the front person, where I walked into a center and that was my picture on the wall that kind of made me want to pass out. Um, and being the person where the buck stopped at the end of the day. So you have to be open after first being confident, and that goes back to Angie's point about that self-esteem. Being confident and, and having um, confidence in yourself that you can do it. Because if you don't believe it, who in the heck else is going to? You have to first believe it. You have to be open to the opportunities. It may not be upwardly mobile at the moment. It may be lateral. Thank you. Yes. Lavana. And you are, by the way. Go ahead. Absolutely. Um, I love when you stood up, you said that some people say I am a connector, and someone in the room may have thought, oh, she thinks she's all that. <clears throat> so I love that. I think if Joyce Elliott stood up, she would say, I am a connector, and I am an enabler, and um, I think that first you have to know you don't have to explain it to anyone. Number two, I would say everyone in this room, and I think I started with this, didn't I? Doesn't matter your age. Doesn't matter how many degrees you have. Doesn't matter your title. Everyone in this room can and has benefited even now from mentors and or sponsors, and you can continue to benefit from them. So I think it's important. I think, Luana, you want people to understand that. And, but you don't want them to think that you doubt yourself or that you, you think you need help. Um, so I think that it's just an acknowledgement if you so choose for it to be. You don't have to explain it to anybody. But it is an affirmative acknowledgement that we, we can uh, empower one another. We can be empowered. We can, and it's perfectly fine. It happens in the business world every day. So here we're sitting talking about it for an hour, but it's actually out there happening every single day. And it's perfectly fine. And the fact that we aren't taking advantage of it only puts us at a disadvantage, quite frankly. It only disadvantages women who are not taking advantage of these opportunities to excel and to get someone to invest in their dreams. So I would just say, be who you are, be that confident connector and dream enabler that you are, and uh, all of you, I hope that for you too. Thank you so much.